Thank you, Dr. Hill. Mr. Holmes, for your years of service um, to this country, and I appreciate y'all um, being here today. Throughout this process, I have said that I want to learn the facts so we can get to the truth. So why are we here? Because of two things that occurred during the President's July 25th phone call with Ukrainian President Zelensky. The use of the phrase, do us a favor, though, in reference to the 2016 presidential election and the mention of the word Biden. I believe both statements were inappropriate, misguided foreign policy, and it's certainly not how the executive, current or in the future, should handle such a call. Over the course of these hearings, the American people have learned about a series of events that, in my view, have undermined our national security and undercut Ukraine, a key partner on the front lines against Russian aggression. We've heard of U.S. officials carrying uncoordinated, confusing, and conflicting messages that created doubt and uncertainty in Kyiv at a time when a new reformist administration has just taken office and was ready to fight corruption and work with us to advance other U.S. objectives. I disagree with this sort of bungling foreign policy. But through these hearings, many of my colleagues have unwittingly undermined the Ukrainian government by suggesting that it is subservient to the United States, and without the United States, they wouldn't be able to function. The Ukrainians, as you stated, Mr. Holmes, is in a hot war with Russia, and they are holding their own. We could benefit from the experience of the Ukrainians, not the other way around. While I thought the Intelligence Committee uh, would actually be engaged in oversight of the intelligence and national security communities, unfortunately, we are not. We're here talking about one of the most serious constitutional duties we have as members of Congress, the impeachment and removal of the President of the United States. Over the past weeks, we've learned a few things. The officials on the July 25th call have many different opinions on whether the call was concerning or not, and just because Vice President Biden is running for president does not mean that corruption related to Burisma, Ukraine's largest natural gas company, and Americans' ties to it are not concerning. There's also a lot we do not know. We have not heard from Rudy Giuliani. We haven't heard from Hunter Biden. I'd like to know more about both of their activities, why they talk to whom and to whom. Despite promises from Chairman Schiff, we have also not heard from the whistleblower, something that can occur in a closed setting without violating his or her anonymity. We need to understand the motivations and level of coordination that happened prior to his or her submission of the complaint. Over the past few weeks, and even today, it's been reiterated. In 2017, the Trump administration made the decision to provide lethal defensive aid to Ukraine after the Obama administration refused to do so. Ukraine is receiving all the security assistance as directed by Congress. President Zelensky has undertaken significant anti-corruption efforts, including eliminating the parliamentary immunity from prosecution. And, again, Mr. Holmes, you mentioned this today, under President Zelensky's leadership, we have finally seen some progress this fall towards ending the Russian occupation of eastern Ukraine. So where does this leave us? An impeachable offense should be compelling, overwhelmingly clear, and unambiguous, and it's not something to be rushed or taken lightly. I have not heard evidence proving the president committed bribery or extortion. I also reject the notion that holding this view means supporting all the foreign policy choices we have been hearing about over these last few weeks. To paraphrase Tim Morrison's testimony this week, every day the national conversation on Ukraine is focused on impeachment, not the conflict in the Donbass, not the illegal occupation of Crimea, not the need for reforms in Ukraine's government economy. It's a day where we are not focused on our shared national security interests with Kyiv. I hope that we won't let this very partisan process keep us from agreeing on how a free and prosperous Ukraine is important to the security of the Ukrainian people, the United States of America, and the rest of the world.